Okay, so our, um, I mean, I, I have a big honor to present our next speaker. Um, I invite, invite the speaker, Professor uh, Jung He Chong. Uh, Jung is a professor of mathematics and the director of IMDARC, the Center of Industrial Math in Seoul National University. He received his PhD degrees in mathematics uh, from KAIST and is working on computational number theory, cryptology, and information security. He's a co-inventor of Braid uh, cryptography and approximate homomorphic encryption HAN. He received a best paper award in Asia Crypt in 2008 and Eurocrypt in 2015, and was selected as scientist of the month by the Korean government in 2018 and won the POSCO Science Prize in 2019 and the PKC, PKC Test of Time Award in 2021. Uh, Professor Chong is now a CEO of the FHE startup Crypto Lab. So uh, welcome uh, to Kogar, uh, Professor Chong. Um, I think you can share now. I have uh, promoted you as panelist. If you can hear me. Okay. Uh, can you? Yeah, I can, I can see your, your screen, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> thank you for the introduction. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, thank you for the organizers to for this interesting workshop, and it's my pleasure to give a talk, uh, invite talk in Kogak 2022. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, perfectly. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Today, uh. I'll talk about uh, approximate homomorphic encryption and privacy preserving machine learning. So our problem is like this. Uh, these days, uh, machine learning and AI requires lots of, lots of data, and then most of them uh, contain some private information. So we have, uh, we need some balance between uh, data sharing and data protection that is utility and privacy. So one may think of this scenario, like uh, machine learning uh, here, let me explain briefly what is machine learning. It, uh, the machine learning is a, uh, a function uh, it <clears throat> on input training data and output a function. This function satisfy like uh, FXI is almost at YI. Then uh, we can think of this one. So if we encrypt training data, can we uh, apply machine learning on this encrypted data? Usually it does not give anything because encrypted data does not reveal anything. But if the machine learning is homomorphic, in some, sort, some sense of uh, homomorphic, uh, then uh, we may think of this one. That is encryption after machine learning, machine learning should after encryption, they should be the same. In that case, we call it encryption is homomorphic. The history back to uh, 178 uh, from Rad, uh, reversed Edmund that to 78, from this time, uh, many people uh, explore the possibility of homomorphic encryption, especially for uh, homomorphic encryption preserving one operation. We had very successful result, including Goldwasser Bikali AD6 and then uh, Baye schemes. But for uh, two homomorphic encryption supporting two operations, it was not so successful. The, the reason is uh, if we can, uh, if a, a, an encryption scheme preserves uh, addition and multiplication on uh, GF2, that means Turing complete. That is, that can uh, compute any operations on encrypted data. Uh, that's why there is some big gap between one operation and even two operations. But later, in, uh, by Gentry, uh, 2009, uh, one interesting and then uh, 
uh, candidate for secure homoping encryptions, and then uh, it, it, the security is proved on the uh, uh, some standard mathematical assumptions. So later we had a lot of works on this area, including uh, BGV and the CGDM, CGGI, and CKKS. So the first area can be considered the Gentry uh, paper and the DGHV paper can be considered first generation. It's, a, it's a like kind of a proof of concept, the plus, first plausible construction for FH scheme. And the second generation, uh, consider, uh, for second generation, we have BGV, LTV, BFV, and more schemes. They support integer operations, like uh, addition and multiplication of integers. And then in third generations, uh, like uh, GS, uh, DM and CGGI, uh, powered by GSW, support Boolean operations. It's very convenient. And then the problem is, our question was, uh, can arithmetic operation be efficient with FHE? Then we need some floating, some, some kind of floating point operations. But uh, pro, uh, with the previous small encryption, it was not that easy. The reason is like this. Uh, in, uh, if we perform integer operations after a multiplication, the plain text text side is doubled continuously. So we need to uh, uh, round, round up the integers to reduce the size of plain text. It's possible with the addition and multiplication, but uh, uh, very costly. So uh, the ideal one is we have one more primitive operation like uh, rounding. So if we have some rounding operation, we can uh, reduce the whole uh, plain text size after multiplication with rounding. So the first paper, uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the first proposal for this uh, of homopy encryption with this uh, property is CKK scheme, what we sometimes we call HEAN in Asia Crypt 2017. So here in uh, we call approximate homo encryption. Uh, homo, approximate homo encryption support addition, multiplication, and rounding. In that case, uh, interestingly, the plain text space becomes from finite field to uh, complex numbers, like uh, we say characteristic P from characteristic P to characteristic zero. So underlying mathematical structure is uh, very different. Uh, but the scheme is uh, very simple. It, there is the ch changes is only, uh, only uh, very small things. We just uh, switch it, the position of errors and the position of uh, messages but the uh, mathematical structures are a little bit complicated. Nay, the partial homopy encryptions allow only one single operation, but in uh, the FH schemes, they allow two primitive operations like uh, addition and multiplication on finite field. So that becomes Turing complete. But uh, the, we can think of what if a homopy scheme supports three primitive operations, even redundantly, then it may be more efficient, it uh, allows uh, more efficient evaluation for many operations. That is three is greater than two. So uh, two operation is enough for Turing complete, but we if we have three primitive operations, it can be more efficient. What if we have more primitive operations? Primitive operation means uh, some operation we can um, some built in the homopy encryption. So that is very efficient. So if we have more uh, primitive operations, that's better. 
but uh, it's very hard to design a homomorphic encryption with more primitive operation, especially if we have some homomorphic encryption supporting uh, uh, logical operation like uh, greater than, then it would be very fantastic, but uh, I couldn't solve and then yet, and then I didn't see any uh, clue. Okay, uh, due, uh, uh, <clears throat> due to those uh, uh, progress, we have more and more efficient homomorphic encryption. The, uh, in 2011, the, the first, implementation of homopin clips uh, fully homopin encryption shows uh, uh, 30 minutes for one bit processing later it has been improved and then uh, until uh, some microsecond uh, performance and, and then the last one is due to uh, hean or ckk schemes so here uh, a uh, for nine years, every year, uh, 7.8 times improvement we got every year. It's, it, it's great. And then even uh, for, uh, uh, for four years ap after this, uh, this point, we expect the similar progress. Now, but uh, with uh, hardware rather than some algorithms. So, for example, deprived uh, project uh, aims to have uh, those accelerators. So, uh, let me introduce one interesting result about the performance of homopy encryptions. Uh, over 100x faster bootstrapping in fully homopy encryption through memory centric optimization with GPUs uh, in chess. 2021. In this paper, uh, the authors uh, utilize GPUs and then design some memory centric uh, optimization. So they get uh, 242 times speed up for uh, uh, some large parameters. The, the uh, quotient polynomial degree is 2 to the 16. That's, that's a la large one. So it's a fully homomorphic encryption. The security parameter is 106. And then using this one, uh, so they compared to eight threaded CPU case for the uh, training a binary classification model, the logistic regression, that it exhibits a speed of 40 times in total compared with uh, 2019, uh, uh, IAAI uh, result about <clears throat> real, uh, the large scale uh, credit score data training. In, so, okay. Then uh, here uh, also they suggest a new metric for performance considering bootstrapping. So amortized multiplication time is defined like this. A uh, bootstrapping time plus multiplication times divided by number of multiplication after bootstrapping. This amortized multiplication time is useful when we uh, uh, estimate the, the timing in some operation which requires a lot of uh, bootstrapping. Okay. With this, uh, with this, uh, un, uh, this measure, we can measure several uh, uh, open source, open source uh, homomorphic encryptions, like uh, for example, Letigo or 10X papers, the previous papers, and uh, F1, uh, and then uh, B BTS. BTS, just a moment. BTS is the paper, uh, uh, will be published in ISCA, and it's an accelerator for bootstrapping fully homomorphic encryptions. Uh, in that paper shows um, uh, 0 0.1 microsecond for amortized multiplication time per slot. 
it's, it's, uh, it, it is amazing. Uh, we can expect uh, much more and more uh, efficient hardware accelerators uh, through those evaluations. Uh, okay. And next questions. Okay, here we we are uh, uh, very successful for accelerating multiplications and uh, bootstrapping as well as encryption and decryption. The next uh, question is the functionality. So we uh, we need to evaluate some non-polynomial functions, not only uh, as well as some uh, polynomial functions. In that case, we need to approximate a non-polynomial function uh, uh, with uh, addition and multiplications. How to approximate? Then we can think of numerical analysis. So does conventional numerical analysis work? Yes, but not always efficient. That optimal lot point is different. The reason is, uh, in uh, in conventional numerical analysis, we considered we we, uh, we use addition, multiplication, and division, and also some if uh, branching operations. But it, uh, in typical homomorphic encryptions, we can only use addition and multiplications without, without division and uh, branching operations. So the, uh, it, uh, so we can uh, make some library for division and branching with addition and multiplication, but it's rather slow. So the the uh, ratio between the performance of multiplication and uh, division is uh, far, very different from the the same one in plain text. So the and then also the performance, we, we need to consider another performance measure that, that is accuracy So and depth. So we have uh, three performance steps, accuracy, number of multiplication, and depth of homopy encryptions. So that, that uh, gives some differences in our uh, uh, numerical analysis. For example, <clears throat> let me show how to get the uh, division or rational functions. For complex X satisfies, uh, okay, the size is limit uh, bounded, then <clears throat> that X inverse can be computed with this formula. X inverse is minus uh, one minus one minus X one over one minus one over one minus x, then we can use this formula. So uh, uh, r uh, r product of those terms gives x inverse. So you you uh, by utilizing this formula, we can uh, evaluate x inverse uh, using addition and multiplications only. Okay, how about sigmoid? For the logistic regression in encrypted state, we need an activate functions. So this, this, this sigmoid function. How to approximate uh, sigmoid with addition and multiplications? Uh, there are several uh, methods, but uh, uh, most of them try to approximate those uh, that the uh, sigmoid function with this real uh, uh, polynomial. So the, <clears throat> for example, so here is some examples. Okay, okay. In this case, uh, okay, we learned the Taylor series and then, uh, uh, and some approximation theories for uh, for, uh, for continuous functions. So uh, we can uh, we have several uh, methods to uh, uh, 
to apply in this scenario. But more interesting or more, uh, more interesting question comes from uh, this comparison function. So comparison uh, function is like this. When uh, on input A and B, you should output one or zero. If, uh, if A is greater than B, it outputs one. Now, how to get a uh, polynomial approximation of these comparison functions? One idea is to take this, uh, the, this function and take a uh, uh, limit. So here, a to the k over a to the k plus b to the k, if a is greater than b, when k is goes to infinity, uh, b to the k can be ignored that it outputs one. If a is, uh, b is greater than a, uh, a, a to the k is almost zero, so it goes to zero. So, and then here, we, this formula can be evaluated with addition, multiplication, and uh, division. So, uh, yeah, and then division can be uh, also <clears throat> reduced to addition and multiplication. Uh, and if we choose k as a power of two, it can be more efficient. And then we should use some approximate computation to take the MSB of the result. Otherwise, uh, it's, it's impossible. Uh, the precision is uh, goes infinity. And then uh, it's successful. And then also we can use some division-free uh, algorithms. Here, we, if we avoid division, we can have more efficient uh, identity. Okay, you can uh, <clears throat> refer to CKK, CKK uh, to, to 20 papers for this one. And we can ev even think of sorting algorithm with this approximate comparison. So, uh, most promising one is to use K-way sorting network for large size data. The one implementing result shows three hours for 3,000 element. Uh, it's huge, but uh, it, at least it gives the first uh, practical result for sorting uh, increased uh, element. Okay. He, uh, here we have uh, several interesting in research topics, like a high precision bootstrapping, how to uh, improve the uh, bootstrapping precision with algorithm way and some implementation way. And then uh, how to increase the precision of approximation. That's the same uh, interesting questions. And one, one monster we have to uh, tackle this table lookup. Homomorphic table lookup is uh, uh, very is demanding, but uh, it's uh, very uh, inefficient. So th that's very interesting questions. And uh, yeah, and then it would be good to have some homomorphic encryption with more hands, like uh, supporting logical operations, so et cetera. We, we have very interesting questions here. Let me <clears throat> move to uh, uh, privacy preservic machine learning. So I think the uh, homopy encryption frees data for AI. Here are some examples include private inference training and statistical analysis. So let me start with the practical uh, real world applications. The first one is COVID-19 tracing app. Using uh, private setting uh, intersections. Here, the problem is to determine whether a user has come into contact with a confirmed person. It's necessary to identify all of the user's paths, but it's uh, sensitive data. In uh, our uh, uh, mobile, the crypto labs mobile app, Kodongi, and they take the intersection between uh, encrypted route uh, using homomorphic encryptions. Uh, <clears throat> interestingly, 
it takes less than five seconds for homopy encryption and transmission and then homopy evaluation, transmission back and, and decryption for uh, 150 uh, kilo people. So uh, we, we can, uh, we think a homopy encryption would be very slow. So it's hard to use for real uh, real time applications, but uh, but this uh, application this app shows it's possible. The reason is the 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 operation is uh, very efficient. So, I mean the uh, in a tracing app they requires only uh, intersection private set intersection operations, which is very fast in uh, plain text operations. So less than one micro, one uh, millisecond. In that case, even though it, it's multiplied by 1000 uh, overhead of homopy encryption, it's, le it's less than one second. It's okay. And second one is uh, Microsoft password monitor. The here, the it takes the problem to determine whether a user password has been leaked. It's necessary to identify all of the user's password. That is also sensitive data. So the, this uh, protocol check and warn if a user password has been leaked without access to user password list. That is encrypted password, uh, the user password is encrypted and then compared with the uh, uh, encrypted hacked list, and then the re the result uh, returned to the user uh, while in, uh, encrypted. So the user only can uh, decrypt the result and see whether his password uh, belongs to uh, <coughs> hacked password or not. Okay. And uh, logistics regression. It's a, this is uh, uh, the, the uh, 2019 uh, result. Here, the problem is to analyze data. Uh, yeah. Okay, the problem is to analyze uh, <clears throat> here. The uh, uh, we want to apply logic regression on encrypted data with la real financial large data. It's about 40,000, uh, 400,000 samples with 200 features. The topic target value is credit score. The logistic regression for this training, it took uh, uh, 17 hours almost. But with the previous uh, uh, the accelerators, it turned into seven minutes with and GPU. So uh, if it's uh, 20 minutes for training, uh, we can say it's uh, really practical. It's uh, ready to um, the market. <clears throat> Let me move to <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Let me move to more uh, 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 recent result in homo encryption applications. One of them is private statistical analysis by statistics in Korea. <clears throat> they claimed case statistics to pub here. They publish encrypted twin of national data. So any, anyone can <clears throat> utilize the government data for statistical purpose, but with uh, uh, increased state. Uh, so after the after some uh, after evaluation of some statistical functions on those uh, governmental encrypted data, uh, the result it is still encrypted. Uh, result <clears throat> sent to the statistics the government, and then government. Uh, decrypt the result and then send back to the user. With those process, all the private information is preserved, but the, uh, uh, the, 
learning insight without privacy leakage is possible. And then the government also can have some control on the uh, on how on the utility of this data. So the <clears throat> uh, it has been started to uh, work on case statistics, and then next year uh, it it can be used to, uh, by people. Okay. And so private training. <clears throat> so uh, uh, we we want to increase analytics, analytics predictive power by combining heterogeneous data. But in that case, the uh, prob, uh, privacy is also one one concern and issues. So we can uh, train the data on encrypted state using homomorphic encryptions. For example, if we combine credit card, credit card data with telecom, telecommunication data, it's very useful for fraud detection. If we add more uh, online shopping data addition, additionally, we can use this one, uh, this model for targeted marketing. So it's very useful. So that is, <clears throat> Uh, in Korea, uh, we have uh, privacy preserving data stem service for, with this one. It's initial state, but it's a very interesting one. Uh, private inference. When we have trained model, uh, we can apply uh, on uh, private information. We can use homopy encryption to get the result without revealing private information. So it, uh, the, <clears throat> the for, for example, in, insurance companies, credit card companies, and banks can calculate and return a credit card's credit score to the user without looking at the user's uh, sensitive information. In, in, in Korea, it's called uh, my data, privacy preserving my data. So uh, it's very useful, I think. Uh, we, we have many uh, application scenario for this private inference. Let me explain uh, one, uh, some of them. One is uh, smart manufacturing. And small and medium manufacturing enterprises often lack uh, skills and resources required to perform in-house uh, PHM analytics, that is prognostics and health management. So we can apply, we can use homopy encryption uh, to apply those PHM on uh, uh, encrypted data to preserve the uh, privacy of the data. That is the client uh, encrypted data, they, machine data, their machine data, and send to the server. The server uh, operate the, or <clears throat> uh, evaluate some uh, machine learning inference, machine learning algorithm on those uh, encrypted machine data to get the result. And then this result sent back to the client. Uh, client uh, decrypt the result to get the uh, useful information like uh, health status and prescriptions. Interestingly, homopy encryption uh, can uh, preserve a privacy of machine, machine data, not only the privacy of human data. Okay, and then chatbot. Another interesting uh, one is private chatbot. Uh, in private in HE uh, private chatbot, the client send uh, encrypted uh, questions to the server, and then the server uh, uh, <clears throat> reply with the answer. But uh, the natural language is hard to uh, process with the homop encryption. But the, here we use the uh, embedding models. So the input text sentence 
converted into uh, embedding vector using embedding model on plain text state. And then this embedding vector encrypted to, into ciphertext. And then those ciphertext uh, collected <clears throat> in the server. And then, uh, and, and uh, oh, OK. Yeah, at the, uh, we, we can use training and uh, classification, both of, class, uh, both of them. Here, in uh, training, there, uh, those, they, those encrypt the embedding vectors collected in a server and then process to get a trained model. And then uh, the third digit should be uh, decrypted. Uh, in that case, we should consider some, uh, uh, some threshold decryptions and some uh, decrypt, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, this uh, the obtained model can be used to, to classify on the uh, client client encrypt data. And then the, uh, the the one implementation showed 0 0.1 second on CPU for 70, uh, 768 dimension. Uh, it, it, it's quite practical. So it's very interesting to private, even private chatbot is not far from the um, uh, real-world applications. Okay, <clears throat> H in future. Uh, many people think H inflection point would be 2024. The reason is ISO standardization will be completed by 2024. And also we uh, will have very uh, good uh, excel hardware accelerators hardware ex AG chip by 2024. So uh, uh, now we can think of HE computing. So in HE computing, every data is processed as HE encrypted. So the um, picture, movie, and the shopping data, SNS data, and uh, restaurant food data, uh, cellular phone data, and manufacturing data, and uh, statistics, and some government data. All, all the data can be processed on encrypted data state. The service, we can provide the services with no big brother and no hacking in clouds. So it will provide future computing without privacy concerns. Okay, thank you for your attention. I'm happy to get some questions or comments. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Chung. This has been a really, really good presentation. I personally learned a lot. Uh, so yeah, we are now open to, to questions. I mean, we have a very good opportunity to ask questions to Professor Chung. So, um, Please feel free to post questions on the chat or, or if you can speak, I mean, you can also verbally ask Professor Chong. I, I, I will start myself with one question, Professor mm -hmm. Chong. Um, actually, this is more like, a, let's say, a philosophical question. I mean, I, I, I am myself a computer architect and uh, I think a big part of the, the audience and organizers of this workshop are also computer architects. And we are all the time trying to generate like a better hardware architectures for let's say in this case, homomorphic, homomorphic encryption, right? And uh, in, in Cogar today, we have seen like different approaches. I mean, like processing in memory or mm -hmm. architectures with like uh, high bandwidth interconnects to let's say memory. I mean, there are like different uh, approaches that uh, different uh, researchers are, are uh, evaluating in, in order to improve homomorphic encryption. So, I mean, there, are, there are a lot of going on in terms of optimizations at hardware level for homomorphic encryption. So what would be your point of view, or I would say your advice to, to us, I mean, the computer architecture community mm -hmm. in terms of uh, where to focus 
uh, in, in terms of hardware optimization for, uh, in, let's say, in the next five years of, of, or so. I mean, if you should focus on something to make our hardware accelerator for homomorphic encryption, what would you advise us to focus on? So, oh, first of all, can you turn on uh, my video? I think uh, you you can. I think you can enable your video. Oh, uh, uh, I tried, but uh, I cannot. Oh, uh, okay. So um, let me see. Uh, today, I, I am asking now to the HPCA oh, admin okay. uh, if maybe can help with, with that. Uh, yeah. But um, uh, <clears throat> meantime, okay. uh, I think most important uh, one is collaboration between uh, hardware accelerator and then algorithm and applications. The current state is very uh, initial state for uh, developing uh, uh, useful hardware and that even for algor algorithms. And I mean, uh, we do not have a fixed state for algorithm and applications. They are, uh, they are update, uh, updated now. And then, <clears throat> so, uh, oh, okay. Okay, so <clears throat> it's much better. <laughs> Uh, so, so uh, I don't think hardware is implementing any fixed uh, algorithm. So uh, the the, uh, the multiplication algorithm, algorithm and the bootstrapping algorithm. So now we are we are having more and uh, more uh, more efficient algorithm, even in, in algorithm sense. So. Uh, it's very important to collaborate uh, with those algorithm people for the hardware designers. And also, application gives some uh, uh, interesting demand. So there is, uh, uh, if some of, uh, I mean, um, if we have uh, uh, interesting uh, new applications, we need to investigate which operation should be accelerated more for these applications. So uh, for example, uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, so also uh, the communication between uh, the application people and then uh, uh, implementation people are in, is important. And then uh, one additional, additional um, uh, advice to, uh, to the researchers is to uh, the memory, and then it's very important in this uh, <clears throat> more encryption evaluations. So the it's very uh, it's necessary for the researchers to work on how to reduce the memory size for the for homopy evaluations, even in algorithm side. I didn't. I don't think the we we <clears throat> we uh, we devote ourselves to these uh, problems, these issues a lot enoughly. So that's one uh, one <clears throat> one topic we should uh, work on more and more. I think. Th thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you. I think we have a uh, we have a question in in the chat um, from uh, John Su John. So hi, thanks for your presentation. Does the metric used for BTS paper to measure overhead of bootstrapping common? Oh, uh, I don't know whether whether it's common. But I think that we proposed this measure in I think that paper proposed the. The major firstly, but it's a very reasonable one. So uh, <clears throat> in uh, when we estimate the when we present the paper, we can say, oh, this multiplication is very best. In that case, sometimes bootstrapping is very slow, or sometimes uh, some papers uh, <clears throat> claims our bootstrapping is very 
efficient, but uh, the available number of multiplication can be sometimes can be uh, very small. In that case, though, it's not so useful to evaluate some functions requiring many addition, many multiplication bootstrapping. So uh, that measure, uh, when we have several result and then when we choose uh, which one is good to use and then then measure is uh, the, the the first measure to explore i think but of course uh, the full implementation of some application would give the result but before choosing some uh, algorithm uh, some some implementation and then we can uh, simply compare the, the the result with those measures uh, juni the, yep. the, oh. this is wrong oh. hey, how are you uh, <laughs> juni uh, as, uh, can i can i add something on the metric because because if you remember when you presented it was i also had the same question <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so the, the, the metric is very similar to, to what I was trying to show in my presentation when I was showing the balance between ciphertext management operation and arithmetic operation. Mm -hmm. But the metric that is proposed in Juni's paper only take into account of multiplications and bootstrapping. And so it shows exactly that the balance usually when uh, it is more skewed toward the bootstrapping, you need to pay more attention uh, to the memory transfer during the keys and things like that. When it goes more toward multiplications and things like that, it becomes less intensive on the memory side than more. So there is something to be said about that metric that capture pretty much essentially where you would uh, pay attention in terms of optimization in an homomorphic encryption program when it runs on a certain hardware. So I just wanted to add uh, an observation about that. Okay, yeah, that, that's a better advanced one, I think. So uh, the, when we look at only algorithmic side, the, the multiple those measures is, uh, uh, is, is useful, but as Ro uh, mentioned, uh, 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 if we the, it's necessary to consider memory a time and then for, for the implementation and then we, that that would be another another measure so yeah, i agree okay so we have another question uh from uh dr pradeep boss from ibm uh pradeep says uh, professor chon thank you so much for the very illuminating talk Question, on one of your trend charts, you mentioned an eight time improvement per year in the algorithm space from 2011 through 2019. Even without the hardware acceleration inflection point in 2024, what would you expect the trend in future improvement in the algorithm space? Um, thank you for the questions. Uh, that's my research top, that would be my research topic. But uh, I think the mm, so uh, the most uh, uh, best thing is to devise a, a homomorphic encryption which support more primitive operations, especially some comparison greater than functions or greater than zero functions. Uh, but uh, without this, this is very. Uh, great great improvement but uh, we, even without this i think we can uh, think of how to mix multiplication uh, and uh, bootstrapping with other operations some kind of uh, programmable bootstrapping also um, uh, i mean uh, by combining several uh, operations with some some uh, necessary application, uh, some functions in necessary for applications, uh, we can uh, we can get another improvement. Currently, we we only accelerate multiplication and bootstrapping, and then uh, use them as a black box when we uh, work on another algorithm. But we need to 
combine those research too. So uh, I think we we have uh, many uh, many research uh, topics in this area. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, pra Pradeep, do you want to uh, comment? Uh, no, no, thank you. That is the reason for the question was, uh, if indeed the algorithm space continues to show that kind of uh, amazing trend, is there anything left for hardware accelerators uh, research to do? <laughs> because <laughs> the gap will be closed. So I'm, I'm just partly joking, of course, but if you think that that trend chart trend line continues, then it may be obsolete. The hardware acceleration research may not be needed. I'm I'm being playing the devil's advocate here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I I'm sorry. I I I I'm not I, I'm not sure whether I understand correctly, but uh, your question is uh, if we uh, have enough uh, speed up by 2024. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then <laughs> I, I I don't think it's enough. So. Okay. You know, you know, <laughs> so so, uh, so our target the, the the target for the community I think uh, as I understand that is we want to have 10x 10x overhead compared with plain text yeah. computation. But Indeed. it's like an ideal goal when we don't have any overhead. So I, I think the, from the uh, current algorithm aspect of homopy encryptions, uh, 10x is uh, uh, lower bound. So yeah. for some operation, like uh, for example, audition and multiplicate, and uh, for the audition, it's, uh, it's possible to get the 10x overhead, but for uh, logical operation, it's very hard. And then we here, we didn't consider uh, 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 the <clears throat> uh, Gauss uh, operation, uh, color operation, that is uh, rotation. Uh, so it, I mean, the uh, if, uh, uh, for example, for, uh, for, for matrix multiplication, if we uh, encrypt one uh, plain text in one ciphertext, it's very fast. But if we pack all the information into the several slots of uh, homopy encryption, we need lots of uh, rotations and uh, that requires lots of memory access. So I mean the rotation keys for the rotation keys. So uh, we have several other problems. So I think even though it's uh, in, uh, in 2024, we uh, we have some very uh, practical, uh, lots of practical applications, but uh, for research point of view, uh, it's just a start. We have more and more interesting one. Thank you, Professor Cheng. I, I think we have maybe time for a last question uh, from Kartik, uh, yeah. raise his hand. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. The professor, great talk. Really enjoyed it. Uh, so you're talking about some of these applications like the COVID tracking, COVID-19 tracking application, for instance. So a lot of these would place a huge onus on the, like the mobile, a mobile device, because I would expect you have to do encryption and decryption on the device. Of course, the 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 multiplicate the homomorphic operations would be done on the cloud, for instance. But even the encryption decryption is something which would be very computationally intensive. So, do you uh, is there a lot of work done in the algorithmic space to optimize or to make your encryption and decryption more efficient in addition to just the computations? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, there is some some trick. Actually, <clears throat> uh, uh, you uh, it, it's kind of a trade off. If we put aside some computation to the server, uh, the for the client, the for, for the mobile side, uh, they can save some uh, encryption and decryption time. Uh, usually, encryption time. So the decryption uh, can be done for small data, but usually encryption can be done 
on large data, 1,000 uh, point, uh, the, the location point in a week. So it can be large, but um, uh, yeah. So we uh, we can use some specialized homomorphic encryption, not general homomorphic encryptions for this purpose, the kind of optimization. Yeah. So is that what you did for the COVID nineteen tracking application, for instance? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, okay. I mean, I, I'm explaining this in COVID nineteen. Uh, application here actually this COVID nineteen uh, tracing app uh, is uh, was de deployed and then uh, two more than two thousand uh, uh, two hundred thousand people are using uh, this app so the performance is very important here right. so we we adopt. Uh, 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 several techniques of uh, to uh, to reduce the computation on uh, mobile side and also to reduce the transmission side I transmission see. overhead yeah right right okay excellent yeah thank you mm -hmm. okay so thank you very much professor chong uh, i mean we really enjoyed this talk and thanks for answering all these questions